Well, we're back at the captain's table today, and uh, somebody's back. Yeah, nice to be here. Good to be back. Just flown in. Flown in this morning. EY 001? 004, I think okay, it was. Okay, great. I think it was. It was a pretty empty flight, but it's uh, reassuring just to drive here and uh, hear you know, two hapless goons on the radio pumping out the same monotonous mm -hmm. platitudes and uh, same stuff. So, you know, nothing changes. It's a good day. Welcome back. Welcome Thank back. You, mate. We've it's missed good, you. Good to be here. We've had a few people through the captain's table while you've been mm, away. I, I think I've missed quite a lot, haven't I? Well, yeah. Yeah. we've got plenty of time to catch up on that. Good. I look forward to it. But we've got a great guest today. Yeah, who's here today? Today we've got Matt Too Good. Hey Matt, guys. Yeah, Matt. Matt from Raw Coffee. We've been here for. Well, we'll talk about how long you've been here, but uh, it's great to have you on board. Yeah, well, good, good table. To be here. And to be here. Uh, yeah, looking forward to chatting about coffee today, which is something yeah. certainly we all share a like for. So um, let's kick into it. See for coffee. Yeah. Mm. See for coffee. Yeah. So Matt, you've um, you when did you when did you arrive to Dubai or the Middle East? This is my fourteenth year here. Fourteenth year. Yeah. So back in the days where two thousand seven, we uh, two thousand eight. Yeah. So we you know when you were when we were racing um, Ferraris every afternoon down. Shakeside Road, and you know, you used to, you know, you roll the dice to go. Okay, yeah. it's going to take me twenty minutes or two hours to get to Budubai, you know, based on the amount of crashes that we're going That's to have. That's true. Yeah. That's true. It was a different world when we. Got so you there. you you just arrived pre-crash, just pre. Well, I arrived yeah just before yeah, yeah just before the crash, because so I think we paid for the shittiest tiniest little villa yeah. in Jumeirah. I think we paid three hundred grand for a, oh, for yeah. a year. You know, like that was back in those days. Mm. You know, it uh, certainly was uh, a different time. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say, and the plan was, I mean, it wasn't raw straight away, was it? No, no, no. So I actually came up here. My wife is an air traffic controller, and okay. um, she had done uh, 12 years staring out a window in Auckland and um, said, hey, it's about time I had a crack at my, my job. Um, I reckon Dubai is going to be the biggest airport in the world, so mm -hmm. can we go and work there? And we knew a number of Kiwis who were already up here. Um, and so, yeah, as we came up here, did a bit of an explore, went out to Fajira for a, for a romantic weekend and then um, decided to move up here. And then I, I came up just to be a house bum, um, which was fantastic. <laughs> I got myself a, uh, a golf membership um, yeah. down at Jebel Ali for the su summer season. You know, played golf every morning. Thought it would be awesome just to. So you're going to be a Jumera Jim. <laughs> completely Jim, yeah. Jumera Jimmy, yeah. and um, that was going to be great. And lasted about I think maybe three weeks. Three and we weeks. Get your feet. Can't do I this. Need to do something. Can't do this. So let's think. Did you spot a gap in the market? What was the existing coffee market like okay. at the time? What, this is was there a light bulb? this is, this is yeah. what happened. Yeah. I went to the supermarket and it was. Spinney's at Mercado, yeah, and um, went there and went to the coffee aisle and started looking at what the coffee was. And I and I, I literally I, I picked up the phone and I rang Tess and I said, "There's no coffee." <laughs> and she went, "No, no, that is coffee." I said, "No, no, no, there's no coffee." Mm -hmm. And so, rang her boss, who was a friend that night, and said, "Okay, so where do you get coffee?" Said, oh well, there's this one lady, she's a Kiwi and she started this roastery. Um, oh, you know, you could buy coffee from her. And okay, where is this? So uh, found out, found found Kim, and um, so I you know, went in there and, and, and tried her coffee. And it was like, okay, this is okay. This is this is it's not it's not quite Auckland standard, but yeah. you know, like this is yeah. this is this is all right. Um, and didn't really think about it too much. Our container arrived up, um, and we'd managed to stuff. Uh, quite a lot of coffee into there, so I think I had about <laughs> probably about um, two months worth of coffee. So yeah. you got—I mean, you're a, a self-professed um, coffee addict, freak, or aficionado from okay. before. So I was—I'm um, yeah, not sure if we're meant to be saying too much. I was a coffee wanker, <laughs> right? And then I became uh, Sir Coffee Wanker, yeah. right, 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 and, good. Uh, and now I'm Sir Coffee Wanker Esquire, Lord, Lord, Lord Coffee of Wanker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, no, I mean. I was working in uh, for Telecom New Zealand, and okay. um, basically the day consisted of hitting the coffee shop downstairs four times. Okay. You know, you'd hit it four times a day, uh -huh. ten minutes espresso. You know, you do that, and it just became a, a routine. My the coffee I liked was two coffee shops down. My mates sure. liked the coffee shop next door. You know, just that, that yeah. the way that we did coffee. And so mm -hmm. coming up here, we had our own coffee machine at home. We had an mm -hmm. espresso machine, a rocket, 
And, um, you know, that was just the way we did. My rocket broke and I needed parts for it. So I contacted the guy who owned it, who happens to be another Kiwi who was living up in Milan uh, yeah. with Rocket. And he said, actually, this lady, Kim. And I went, I've already met this lady, Kim. Oh, is she right. the only person in the coffee business? So, yeah. you know, you meet someone twice and you go, oh, okay. And um, what ended up happening is that I, I realized that I couldn't just play golf. Yeah. Um, and so I did a, uh, I decided to do a, a marketing paper through Polytech. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. part of it was doing a case study on a business. And so I write up this whole case study and I, so I rang Kim up and I said, hey, listen, can I come and ask you some questions? I want to do a case study on your business. Did it all, wrote it all up. And then when I finished it, I, uh, I got an A for it. So um, I handed it to Kim and said, here, you know, here's this business plan I wrote for you Fantastic. to uh, yeah. expand into the retail coffee market. Yeah. And she, she read it. She said, oh, that's really cool. And I said, do you want to give it a try? And she said, yeah, but I can't afford it. I said, oh, I know that. I've done an interview with you. I know you can't afford it. I said, well, I, I, you know, I'll come in and do it. So I jumped into the business. Two weeks later, yeah. I sat down with her and her husband at the time, and I said, this isn't going to work. We need to yeah. really look at the business in a different way. Sure. You know, I have the ability to look at some of the ways that we could enhance the business, mm -hmm. and um, the rest is basically history. Um, you know, uh, six months later, um, we agreed on a partnership. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just developed the business from there. But mm. basically, both of us came in with a passion to do something. Yeah. Dubai gives you that amazing ability just to flex muscles that you've never flexed before. You know, you can make mistakes here mm. and it doesn't kill you. Sure. I reckon five times over the last 14 years, we've made mistakes that would have killed the business if mm. we'd been at home. But we were just able to yeah. just do what it is because we had a we had a core belief in what we were doing. Um, and, and and the original original idea was for the distribution of coffee and having the coffee store as well in our cause. Or okay, so the, Kim's original plan this was that she was going to supply retail coffee to houses, to houses. Yep. Okay, right. And that started out slowly. Right. Um, they had spent all their money before they'd even sold a bean, sure. and um, and in fact, yeah problems um, mm -hmm. and it ended up the first commercial customer was Gordon Ramsay um, at Veer yeah, restaurant yeah, down yeah, at the Hilton yeah. um, and then um, then more and more commercial customers came on board and immediately we, we realized that cafes and restaurants were desperate for a product like right. they were just because there was nothing to supply so it, so it, B2B. it yeah. became a so the B2C was the idea yeah, yeah. and B2B became the mainstay and very, very quickly B2B became huge for us. Like So what were they doing up to that point? Was it just small traders? There or? was there was a there was, you know, the the, the local coffee roasteries, okay. which do the nuts and everything else. Okay. That basically okay. take whatever was coffee and burn it. And right. then uh, there was a few importers of very, very poor quality coffee. Mm -hmm. Um and that was about it. There was no, there was literally no options, mm. um, and the quality was just appalling. Mm. You know, um, I remember finding a can of Illy that was eleven months old on the on the. You know, that was the best you could possibly get at a supermarket. Right, you know, back right. then. You know, and if so, one of the things that I I'll let the cat out of the bag. You don't actually have to be very good at roasting coffee. Fourteen mm. years ago, what you had to be is fresh. Okay, 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 right? okay. Because you know that aroma that you get from coffee? Yeah. And that's the that's the thing that attracts us all, that beautiful yeah. smell. Even if you don't drink coffee, you like mm. the smell of coffee. That aroma is what the flavor should be in the cup. Right. So if you're smelling the coffee, you're not mm. drinking the best quality. Mm -hmm. So if you've got something that's a year old or even three months old, all the aroma's gone, which is all the flavor in the cup. So okay. what we did is introduce a product that was fresh. Right. And... You know, we think back to what we were doing mm. that that long ago, and it wasn't fantastic. And, and just to be clear about when you're saying fresh, are you talking about freshly roasted and then consumed, mm -hmm. freshly imported? What's the differentiation okay. between that? When you roast coffee, you chemically change its structure. Yeah. You have to allow that coffee to what we call rest. You have to allow it to degas because it produces mm. carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide officially, according to the scientists, takes 10 days to exit from a bean once it's been roasted. So if you take a coffee that's been roasted for 
10 minutes old mm-hmm. and you try and drink it, it tastes terrible. It's just full of gas and it, it's mm-hmm. really unsettled. It's a little bit like you open a bottle of wine, mm-hmm. give it five minutes to, to relax, to, mm-hmm. to oxidize a little bit. Um, it's much more developed. So the coffee is mm-hmm. exactly the same. But what ends up happening is that if you grind it, you accelerate that degassing process really quickly. Okay. So after, say, three or four days, you could grind it and you could manually pour over or do a you know a, a filter type yeah. uh, thing or a French press and the coffee will taste okay. Mm. But if you're using it for espresso, if you use it before eight days, it's not going to be the best it possibly can be. Okay. Um, and, but the, the negative side is that the moment that you grind the coffee, immediately you're allowing all the aroma to go mm. and you actually lose... 50% of the flavour in two minutes. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. The reason why serious coffee drinkers have the whole bean yep. that's roasted yep. and then they grind it themselves and then they use what they want. Okay. Yeah, so we we know that people need to, often people don't have a grinder. But like we have, we sell espresso machines and have done for, mm. you know, forever. Yeah. And I say to somebody before you buy an espresso machine, what grinder have you got? That's more important. So mm. you can improve the quality of your coffee drinking mm-hmm. at home by 100% just by grinding it fresh before you make it. It sure. doesn't matter what way you make it. That's a great tip. Mm. Great tip. And then and then if we go back a step, the bean, uh, and, and we'll talk about the logistics part of it later, which of course is a big problem at the moment. Um, is there any issue there with a duration of the bean in the bag, how long it's going to be before it becomes yeah. two by so, two? The green bean, when we buy it from the farmers, mm. um, we get we refrigerate our coffee. So when mm. it it goes into reefer containers, and then when it arrives, we put it into a fridge, and that's kept at eighteen degrees, sixty uh, percent humidity. And we get uh, probably between twelve and eighteen months from when it arrives. It's still good quality. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Once you roast it, you let it rest. So ten days to fourteen days is optimum drinking. Unless it's certain types of coffee, there's a couple of coffees that I really love that I actually find that they, if you put them in the right bag, out of the light, no extra air going to it, six weeks, they can be, they can be really amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much after two months, the coffee starts to fade away. Okay. And it's not, it's not bad, it's just not as good as it was. Mm. After three, four months, it's lost all its vibrancy. It's lost the acidity, which is what gives you the brightness and the, and the flavour. In it. I mean, you can drink it, it's still going to have caffeine in it, mm. but it's just not going to be not going to be good. It's a little bit like pouring a beer and drinking it the next day. Yeah. Got it. yeah. Okay, yeah. understand, understand. And so, and so you must have changed the whole way coffee was. We, it was really lucky for us um, because back then we could just literally go, here, try this, and people yeah. would just go, yeah. wow, that's different. Yeah. And they could see it. And that was, I mean, I to get in trouble because I used to literally see someone walking past with a Starbucks cup, you know, when we were yeah. doing a school fair or something. Yeah. And I'd run out and I'd grab the cup off them and say, I'll give you two of mine yeah. and, I, you know, and I'll pay you the money if it is it's not better than that. Yeah, yeah. And every single time they'd end up being a customer. And that's basically what we did. As the, um, the coffee world here, because there's less people drinking alcohol here, coffee became really, really popular. Yeah. So that gap of poor quality coffee has disappeared, which is fantastic. The yeah. quality of coffee in the, in the Middle East has gone up mm. significantly, especially in the last five years. Mm. Um, so that differentiation now is more about what do you like? Yeah, right. Because there's so many different varieties, there's different roasting methods, there's yeah. different ways that you can prepare it. So you now can cater to everybody's taste rather than just having bad coffee and good coffee. Fine. So you've got a little bit more competition in terms of knowledge base yep. and supply chain. Yep. And obviously Raw is the one that, in, to my mind, is the one that sticks out. It was the first, mm. always has a great name. Um, what are you doing to keep ahead of the competition? What, I mean, what are you... How does Raw go now? I mean, for example, we've you know the, the few hundred people that listen in. I mean, a lot of them will be you know quite serious coffee drinkers mm-hmm. um, as consumers, but you know specifically in Dubai, are you still doing a lot to B two C or are you still doing a lot of B two B or a bit of both? How, how how can we get Raw? So COVID turned our business on its ear. Okay, like literally, it is not the same business that it was. So our uh, B2B business was 80% of our business pre-COVID. We were expanding into Saudi Arabia. Um, 
there's a, there's a bunch of things that um, you have to look at when you're doing a B2B supply, which is more around the commercial aspects of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that you've got to do is, like, coffee is one of these things where I, we have way too much coffee in our stores. Mm -hmm. And that's basically because Kim and I find all these amazing coffees and we keep buying them, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, a lot of these coffees are quite complex and it's a little bit like, you know, having a, a really good cut of meat. If you're not mm -hmm. a good chef, you can easily okay, destroy okay. something that's really, really high quality. Um, and so what when you're looking at a commercial supply, you have to balance out, like, so what's their customer going to be like? Yeah, yes. You know, um, what are the baristas going to be like? Yeah. What milk are they using? What so water are they sure, using? Sure, so yeah. what's the what's the product going to taste like? Yeah. So let's match the coffee that's going to be easy. Yeah. Right? So sometimes, um, like, Colombian coffees are beautiful. Mm. And, and Mexican coffee, if mm. you make Mexican coffee badly, it's still better than a Brazilian coffee. Okay. You know, so, you know, you find the ways of doing it. When COVID hit and everybody's left the cafes and they're at home, mm. all of a sudden people have got time. So we spent a huge amount of time doing Zoom barista training oh, and, um, you know, teaching and educating. So all of a sudden you get to people at home for three months. Yeah, yeah. They've played and they've, they've lifted their coffee game up sure, significantly. Sure, sure. We sold... I think 450 espresso I'm machines. I was thinking that. How many machines you were It was sold. just insane. Yeah, right. Right? And yeah. this is not just here, everywhere. Yeah, you right. know, the manufacturers just couldn't keep up. So yeah. we were just getting plane loads of espresso machines as fast as they could make them and yeah. delivering them. We were doing, we went from doing 60 deliveries a day to 450. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. You Amazing. know? Um, yeah. And so we ended up with this B2C play, which was, it, it Unfortunately, the volume was huge, but the revenue was very, very small. It was mainly maybe fifteen percent of what we were doing. Okay. You didn't have the coffee drinkers in the, in the cafes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, that's what you need. And and you know, it doesn't take a mathematician to work out yeah. what it actually costs to make a cup of coffee versus what mm. you know yeah. they're doing at a cafe, mm. right? And there's a running a cafe. There's a huge amount of costs that people don't understand. Yeah, right. But you know, and most of the time, you know, they need to charge those prices in order to even break mm. even. Mm. But you know, all of a sudden we've got a more mature coffee palette across the whole country because yeah. people have spent time to understand what they like. Mm. And then, um, so that actually, uh, B2C supply maintained at actually a very, very high level. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think we're still running at over double what we were pre-COVID. Um, wow. So that was a nice growth. Yeah. Um, but what we ended up having to do is really look at what we could do at the cafe side of things. Yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately, probably 40% of our commercial customers shut down and didn't reopen. Yeah, I was thinking that. Um, yeah. So that wasn't coming back. Yeah. We had a cafe space that um, we could, uh, luckily, we've got about 8,000 square feet in our cafe, mm -hmm. and we could socially distance, and so we could have enough tables that could just be enough mm -hmm. to break even. So we co concentrated a huge amount on ourselves. So how long, how long was that... Uh, after the lockdown, which I think it was April, March, April, were you immediately able to open that or did you have several months of closed? We closed, I think, two weeks before we were instructed to close yeah. because we felt uncomfortable with our team and things. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I can't remember exactly when we reopened the, um, the actual cafe, but we did a staggered approach where we had takeaway for nearly a month. Sure, sure. Uh, and then we started to have people coming in. Mm -hmm. um, we redid the whole kitchen, the whole menu. Kim and I looked, actually had some time. Yeah, right. So COVID gave us a bit of time to reflect on what we wanted to do. Sure. And there was a few things that we wanted to do in the cafe that just what we wanted, mm. you know, we sort of bet on ourselves. Yes, said yeah. if we like it, people will like it. Um, and so that was that's become a huge part of it. Mm. And I think that, you know, I think the Dubai community pulled together better than most places around the world yeah. um, and the support was incredible like, yeah, you know sure. people were coming in and genuinely just doing it because they knew that it would help us yeah. Um, yeah. but you know since since uh, lockdown we've uh, nearly doubled our team um, wow. we ended up uh, revenue year on year 25 percent up um, so that was quite spectacular and the fact into the fact that unfortunately because a lot of the suppliers and the smaller guys that were supplying coffee are out of business or maybe they're coming back there's probably the great chance for growth now as a, as a 
as we all come out of lock, well, we're out of lockdown, mm. but we're, we're having a far more um, normal lifestyle. Yeah. So coffee is the number one consumed drug in the world. Okay. Right? It is the number one consumed drug in the world. Okay. So, um, you know, people, uh, you know, are going, people don't realize how much they rely on their coffee. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, that's true. You know, and, you know, and it'd be it through tea or through chocolate, right? So yeah. caffeine rather than just coffee mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. Um, Dubai prior to COVID was oversaturated with supply of coffee roasteries. Mm-hmm. So to give you an idea, um, uh, three, three and a half, nearly four years ago, there was a total of 11 coffee roasteries in Dubai. Wow. Okay. That, was, that, that was that. Was that. Um, now, well, pr- prior to COVID, I don't know what the number is now, there were 63. Okay. Right, so the explosion in roasteries. Now, if you think about, we produce every hour, we can roast uh, finished product, 160 kilos of coffee an hour across our machines. Now, we're not a big roastery. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of bigger roasteries, but you know, your your standard roastery is producing somewhere between 50 and 200 kilos an hour. Now, 200 kilos, that's uh, 20,000 cups of coffee. (laughs) <laughs> that's right. incredible and one of 63 yeah so 63 so. roasteries producing that now we drink a lot of coffee like I mm. probably drink the equivalent of 6 to 8 dump espressos a day mm-hmm. that's my normal consumption so if, if if everybody's drinking two cups of coffee yeah. you, know, you, you know there is mm. there became an oversupply sure. right and that wasn't necessarily good because a lot of people don't um you know, you've set up your business, you've got to sell stuff. Mm. So all you do is reduce margin to yeah. try and increase volume, but it doesn't work. Mm. It's, the, it's the age-old model of round here, I'm afraid. It's uh, not how it happens, how it works out in the end. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the guys, you know, a lot of a lot of places here, you know, coffee was a passion. Mm. It didn't necessarily have to be a business that had to support itself. Yeah, yeah right. Right? And then COVID hit, and it's like, I'm not interested in that anymore. Okay. Yeah. Right. So they closed down. So that's sort of taken the foot off the every roaster's throat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but it still underlines, Matt, does it not? This, the quality absolutely is 100% to be able to reassure the customer that what you're paying for is what you get. And but this is exactly what happened. Yeah. So people spent three months in their kitchen. Then they come mm. back and they go back to their usual haunt. And that yeah. might be a chain brand, international right. brand. And they went, yeah. This is that ain't good money. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and the yeah, other yeah, thing yeah. that they said is, I've got money, yeah. but I'm not giving it away. Yeah, I don't know right. where my next paycheck's coming from. Sure. Everything could change again. So if I'm going to go and pay 20 dirhams for a cup of coffee, yeah, yeah. you know, I expect it to be here now. Yeah, yeah right. And that was brilliant. Because yeah. then it was like, let me open my kimono yeah, and yeah, show sure, you sure, what sure. we do. Yeah. Sure. You know? Yeah. And part of the reason that we focused a lot is going back to what we did originally, because mm-hmm. Kim and I had nothing we had no money whatsoever um and so we lived hand to mouth um and we would go to any event that could possibly give us a way that we could introduce you know be introduced to a customer yeah so it was a school fair or it might be so it was three o'clock in the morning going and dragging a van and sending an espresso machine up and and Mm. doing it so you get a bit sort of you know scrappy dog about how you want to run your business coming out of COVID, exactly the same thing I want to show you what I can do. I'm in control mm. of my cafe. I, mm. We can show you what we can do really well. And we, we've got that bubble under control. And um, so that's exploded. And now, um, yeah, um, yeah, we, um, we, we're, we've actually uh, decided to open two more cafes. Oh, right. right. Okay. <laughs> so you've got the one in our cause. Yep. Well, uh, before that, there was there was the, the one 100 metres down the road that I spent a bit of time in. You spent a lot of time there, as you yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and before that, we're at the garden center. Before that, you're at the, that's right. That's yeah, and right. before that, uh, the original roaster was in DIP. Okay. And a um, little known fact, Kim actually sold that roaster to Coffee Planet. That was oh, Coffee yeah. Planet's first roaster. Really? Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the Alcoz store is version five right. of Raw. And um, we've just uh, uh, been given the huge privilege to be able to do the cafe at Deep Dive Dubai. Um, oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so we're really excited about that. Yeah. That's going to be uh, branded under the, the brand Equalize. Okay. Right? And that's just open today. Today, right. Yeah. So, and we're also going to be the cafe at Skydive Dubai. Okay. Which, uh, so we're going to have Equalizing above and Equalizing below. 
Ah. Um, so and working then, in, so the, so the raw brand won't be seen there. It will, it will be yeah, there. it's it's fueled by raw. So okay. raw is always going to be the coffee provider yeah. and everything there. But we you know we've we've taken the cafe concept, mm. expanded it more into. Um, Strangely, since COVID, we've actually started another business, which is Raw Beverage Trading, which is about providing products that the cafe needs. Because what we realised is that we needed we need hot chocolate, we need uh, we need iced tea, we need yeah. matcha, we need all these other things. We need yeah. smoothies, we need everything else. So um, we're working with uh, one one stop shop, one stop shop for a cafe. And there was there was something that uh, technician Liv picked up today she mentioned to talk about is the barista training you do mm-hmm. as well, mm-hmm. which I'm, I'm, which I, is crucial for absolutely. what you're saying. is yeah. Absolutely. So coffee first, you need to have a decent coffee bean. Yeah. The next thing you have to have is good water, right? right. You can't, like 99.7% of a coffee mm. is water. Yeah. So getting the water right, uh, critical, and mm. we have, we've developed, I've developed a, a product called raw water, which is using reverse osmosis and remineralization to produce the perfect water for coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do that for our things. So you have to have the good equipment. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to service that equipment. So we import equipment. We have service technicians that, that can service that. Then you have to have barista training, and that's mm. that's critical. And then the business needs people to consult with them to help mm. them be a successful cafe. Yeah, sure, sure. Right? So how do you do workflow? How do you... So you, you'll actually go into a cafe and say, tick, tick, you need yeah. to do this. A full it, consultancy. Sorry. It's really, really funny. When we're talking to a customer, commercial customer, mm. coffee is the fifth thing that we talk to them about. Right. 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 You've got to get all these other things yeah. right, right before you can even think about making a cup of coffee. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's you know, it's it's wonderful and it's fun to make a coffee at home. Mm. But you go into, you know, Roar and our course on a Friday, the barista's making seven to nine hundred coffees mm-hmm. in a shift. Well, you know. It's that's working, yeah. but if you go to New Zealand, yeah. in the same shift you'd be doing two thousand coffees. Okay, okay, okay. So if if you were to run barista training, well, you do do barista training because mm. I always think for somebody going on an overseas holiday or something like that to have that training to be able to turn up somewhere and say I can be a barista must yep. be a fantastic asset. What? How long does it take? Uh, how much does it cost if someone's listing and they wanted to do some training? Okay, so if you wanted to do, so there's 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 barista training in different forms. Mm. Barista training for just fun, mm. yeah. right? We do that, which is great. You know, come in on a Saturday, mm. spend three hours, drink way too much coffee, go out shaking. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, try latte art, try yeah. a professional espresso machine, and mm. learn how to how to actually operate that. Mm. Um, the second set of barista training that we do most of is commercial, right? Which is People here are starting to realize, invest in your staff. Of so course. if you're opening a place, spend some money on training your people, yes. yeah. you know, yeah. and then you, they can do a good job. Yeah. And that's that's hardcore, yeah. right? So that's uh, three days full-time is the first session that you're doing. Yeah. 30% of that is actually uh, pr- knowledge, yeah. and yeah. then the rest of it's practical. Yeah. 60% is practical. For, we're, we're running a, a new thing, which is literally um, starting out as a barista. Yeah. Um it is a course again. It's it's a three day course. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's about two thousand dirhams. Mm-hmm. But there's different levels to it. So you start at an entry level, and you can buy more modules. There is also the formal um, uh, specialty coffee association, global association. Okay, so there's an accreditation. You there's can an accreditation get. that you can actually go yeah, through, right. and that comes in three levels. That start. I think it's about to do the whole. I, I I've got my diploma mm-hmm. in coffee, which is all the different aspects of coffee, and it took five years. Okay. And I think okay. I, we would have spent oh, nearly 100,000 dirhams doing that. You know, uh, um, yeah, you're a full-blown blood belt. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. With two down from yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no that's, where, that's yeah. where that squire comes yeah. on to yeah. serve coffee wanker. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the, the stuff that we're doing a lot of is exactly that. You know, yeah. a lot of, um, uh, in fact, I just we just employed a young gentleman this afternoon yeah. um, who a lot of people have been stuck here. They yeah. were expecting to finish university and go off and get a job. Now that's not happening. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of that, uh, a lot of that sort yeah. of training. But the big yeah. thing about coffee training is we can teach somebody. I can teach you to make a coffee in 20 minutes mm. but to actually make coffee you just yeah. have to practice yeah sure sure sure, sure. Um, sure. get the basics up because i always think it's such a good trade to learn. and do you if you have more tattoos does that make you a better <laughs> barista if you don't have tattoos don't even think yeah, you're a barista right, right. 
Right. It's and, uh, and a man bun, I would have thought, probably comes in handy as well. It used to be, now... No, now no, no, we don't do that anymore. Uh, okay, we yeah. heard it here first. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Yeah. But, you, but you have to change your facial hair at least three times a month. Okay, good. good. All right, well, that's good to know if I need to change my profession. Um, okay, so where about to, where about to your beans coming from now globally, coming into you now? Yeah, so we, you know, being in Dubai, when you, mm. you know, remember those days where you, before you even knew what SpeedX was? Yeah, remember that's the old true. Days, that's old true. days of SpeedX, yeah. right? So SpeedX yeah. was cool before they changed it. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's right. Where you hit your hammers <laughs> and your drills and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. like I remember the building the first or the second raw when we moved mm. to our course, trying to go and buy screws and I couldn't get screws. So mm. I was getting screws sent in from, from you know, Canada, you yeah. know. Um, <sighs> Where do you, when when you're when you're developing something here, mm. how do you work out today what you're going to achieve? Like if you're developing your podcast, mm. how do you just immediately like? Can you just go down tomorrow and just buy microphones? Can you buy um, the equipment to to do a podcast? I think I know where you're heading. Uh, yes, you can. Is that easy now? But, but the important point is, if you're from a standing start, no, it's not, because you've got that knowledge gap. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So I see where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, I understand, I understand. So back to the point on uh, coffees and where you're getting it from. You've had, you, were, you were touching on the point that you said that um, you'd have a lot of time to think over the past yeah. few months. Yeah. So about innovation, keeping ahead of the game, yeah. adding yeah. to your... We were incredibly lucky mm. that one of the ways that we did is, you know, being because of that fact that in Dubai you can't just snap your fingers and get something, we mm. had to diversify our supply chain. Yeah. Um, that's also kind of cool because mm. coffee's not coffee. So mm. coffee coming from a different country has a different flavor profile mm. and everything. So we buy coffee from Africa. Um, I love Ethiopian coffees. Uh uh, we just had we've got Kenyan coffee in for the first time in five years. Um, we get a lot of coffee from um, Rwanda, mm. Burundi, uh, Uganda. We have got coffees from. Um, we're buying all through Papua New Guinea, East Timor, Myanmar, wow. uh, Colombia, uh, Peru, Nicaragua, Mexico, uh, Guatemala. Um, you know, we're getting coffees from all over the world, and they're all completely different. And they're all uh, got their own unique stories behind them. Brilliant. Um, and so it's pretty well impossible for a, an aficionado like yourself. It's like, I'm quite interested in wine. Yep. And people say, where's the best wine from? It's like, well, what day is what, it? What, what exactly? Yeah. Yeah. Where, you know, what, what are we using like? with it? What, yeah. what yeah. mood are you in? Yeah, what? exactly. Yeah. Coffee. So technically, coffee is more complex than wine. If you look at the flavor profiles available in coffee, Wine, they say about 800 different flavor profiles. Mm. Coffee is over 1,200. And that's the scientists telling us with mass yeah. spectrometers that this aroma field is, yeah. is available. Um, and it, you're 100% right. Mm. The difference between wine and coffee is that wine, the winemaker has decided how they want that wine to taste. Absolutely. Right? You can control a lot of it. Yeah. You can control, in many cases, um, can control the, the flavor profile, uh, the alcohol content, the acidity. Yep. And it's, it's, a, it's a combination between the, where it's been grown. And how long and it's barreled for, you yeah, know, to and, get what. And then you know. to actually the, yeah, the interventions or the lack of that yep. they make when they're when making it. And that's the same with coffee. Up until the point that we're not doing the final preparation. Yeah. Right. Okay. right? Of course. And the, the a minute adjustment and grind size will completely change the profile on the coffee. Mm. But there's rules to it, right? So the, the basic rules are if you, when coffee extracts, you get different elements of that extraction. So the first bit that comes off is all the exciting acidity, you know, the, the, the super high end, mm -hmm. hit you in the face acids. Then you typically get a lot of the sweetness and then the last part of the extraction is the bitterness. And you've got to find the cutoff point. But you can manipulate that extraction by changing the grind size. Mm -hmm. So if you want more frontal acidity, you can make that grind finer, which mm -hmm. means that the coffee will extract more quickly and you'll get more into the cup. Mm -hmm. 
And if you want to have you know, more bitterness in the cup or more balance, you can make it coarser. So mm. you can immediately play with it. Then you can play with the temperature of the water. So you can, you know, the hotter the temperature, the faster it will extract, the more acidities you'll get. You know, and so if you know the basic rules, mm. you can do it. But there are so many variables, yeah, and that's yeah. the challenge. Yeah, it's the challenge that we face. And this mm. is going back to what I was saying about making sure you match the coffee for the customer, yeah. right? Um, so you sometimes you don't want you want to take those variables away. Mm. Um, you know, we've got these whiz bang coffee machines that change the pressure when yeah. they when they're brewing. So they mm. you know give you fourteen bar and then six bar and then do all this other stuff. Um, you know, it, it, it's fun. Yeah. But yeah. Well, in the words of um, Alexander Pope, a little learning is a dangerous thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, how, how do you keep up with the knowledge of the latest in coffee, and where is all this information coming from? You've got to. Well, I mean, I'm lucky that I wake up every day and I go to work and I enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah right. The most enjoyable part is that we actually have uh, our own control quality control lab which mm. is a, buried in the bowels of raw that no one even knows where it is and we you know you, it's, these days it's about the only time that Kim and I actually spend about an hour together catching up because yeah. we go in and do our quality control we also do our, our buying and our cupping that's okay. what called cupping when you sample it and that's just the most beautiful part of my day because mm. I close the door you turn on you flick up we've got a red light in there because yeah. you cup under red lights um, and, and you just immerse yourself we don't yeah. talk when we're actually cupping itself so it's yeah. all quiet it's just doing it and that's that's what I enjoy and I've actually you know we've actually become really good at it mm. right so my palate is now very good but it's training yeah you right. know mm. um, it can be a bit of a pain mm. um, but the 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 day to day stuff I tell you what the easiest thing I do is every morning I come in and I get two double espressos um, <laughs> and I and I go off to our sales meeting every yeah. morning and I drink that and if I don't notice the first one, the day is going to be good. If I okay. notice it, there's something wrong, right? Okay, the humidity is okay. too high today okay, or the, okay, okay. You know, the coffee's not yeah. coming out quite right or yeah. whatever. So um, the other thing is that my business is all about sensory experience. Yeah. And... We actually run a course, a century course, which I think is the most fantastic course you can do. Um, it, it is coffee-centric, but you, it's not about coffee. Right. So if anybody says to me, I want to do a course, what should I do? I say, go and do the sensory course because it's all about understanding how things work. Well, yeah. um, you know, and we use, I'll let a few secrets out, we use uh, different jelly beans and stuff to give people uh, an sensory experience and how, how you do it. Once you awaken that part of your brain, yeah. mm. Um, it's exactly the same. I love, uh, you know, with different wines and stuff. Yeah. It's and a, you, need, you need a little bit of co coaching, really, to be able to say, well, these are the things, the characteristics you're looking for. And once you start to realise what's there, you, you're off and away. Yep. And that's exactly what you're doing and what you're saying, I think. So if people always ask me, what's the best coffee? Yeah. And, 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 and the answer is, the best coffee is the one that you enjoy the most. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right? Now, if a customer comes into me and says, I want this super dark burnt roast mm. of coffee, mm. okay, you enjoy that the most. Let me show you some other things yeah. mm. that might open your, you know, your knowledge. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, you know, and there are technically better coffees than others. We mm. actually have an international scoring system for coffee. Really? Right. right. So I can cup a coffee and compare with, with my suppliers, suppliers or I can compare with other roasters around the world. Around the world and, and we, we have, have a language, language that, that we speak. speak. Right, so we talk about, you know, all these different variables. There's ten different variables in a in a, in a cup score, yeah. and you know, we, we 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 know we can communicate. And but what I like is irrelevant when you're doing that score. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the thing is that what what I love doing is finding a coffee yeah. that someone likes, and that's what we want to work on. Exactly. You know, exactly. find out you know what yeah. the captain's coffee is. The captain's coffee. It's it's going to take a long time, I think. Got to get it just right. I think that we probably have to do a lot of research and development. A lot of research. I think we have to develop your palate first. Yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> I know I drink a lot of coffee, but I think I drink a lot of rubbish coffee. Yeah. So sometimes I need to. That's what I need to do. Yeah. That would yeah. be an interesting process, sir. Huh? You've yeah. got me hooked. Mm. I'm in. Excellent. Well, we're there. You come down, and we'll just. Do it. I actually bought you guys five. Yeah. Tell us, tell us about this, please. This is just an easy way of, mm. of doing it. It's it's a. It's something I never thought we'd do. Mm. I never thought we would come up with a solution like this because it kind of breaks the rules that I've just been talking about. But what we've done is worked out a way of having um, uh, a 
an easy solution that you just need a kettle, hopefully with good water, and um, you can do a, a pour over method. It's, it's a very old system. It's been around for, I think, over 15 years, mm -hmm. but we've taken a different approach and made it especially coffee. Um, so these are uh, single serve pour over pouches. Um, and then also this, this is just to get you guys up tomorrow morning. So okay. just some uh, pre-done cold brew. This I actually, I'm, I'm drinking a lot of this at the moment where I, I do 50% of this and then 50% mm. hot water. And it's the best Americano that you can possibly I've got a, and, yeah. that, and that's what you do, just 50% just of that and hot water. Yep. Or you can just drink it cold straight out of the bottle. But this is pretty powerful. There's 200 milligrams of caffeine in that. So I've, I've got an RPM, it's, 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 it's an 8 o'clock in the morning with uh, I mean, clouds. If, you, um, if you're listening in and not, um, yeah, it's an incredibly dark, mm. I'm not going to say viscous because it ain't, but it's just, it's, you can just, it's rich, dark. What time zone are you on at the moment, Rex? Uh, I'm minus uh, three. Three. Yeah. yeah. So or it's, plus three. So I, it's, um, it's four o'clock in the afternoon for me. Right. Right now. Do you want to be, do you want to go to sleep tonight? Um, I do, so probably don't go near that, I'm, I'm guessing. Right. I won't touch that after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. okay. Right, that, that's that's 3 o'clock in the morning. If you, if it's you rocket have, fuel. It's exactly what it's on the bottle. It yeah. is. If we're in a different country, we'd call mm. that liquid cocaine. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. brilliant. Now, um, Expo's coming up. Yeah. And uh, that's exciting for Raw too, isn't it? Yeah, so we are the official supplier to the New Zealand Pavilion, mm -hmm. which is Brilliant. super, super cool. Um, it's actually an interesting thing. We went and talked to the team there, and I said, look, I don't care who you use as your coffee supplier, but I am insisting that this has got to be quality. Yeah. right. It doesn't matter who you use, but it's got mm. to be up to New Zealand standards. And um, they said, yeah, can you help us? And we said, sure. So that's, that's exciting. Because mm. um, you're already up there now, aren't you? We were out there for the the trial. Oh, run. that well, that was when yeah, I was out that there was fun. Well. Yeah. yeah, so we did. There was a yeah. three month trial. Mm. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. We learned yeah. a lot. Expo is super exciting. Mm. Like and now that they've announced there's going to be the expat pass, which is going to be a one ticket thing, and you can do unlimited. Visits. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, great. Yeah. That's good. I think it's five hundred dirhams or something. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It is. It's, it's it a really good price. Yeah. I, don't, I think most people don't realize what's happening at Expo. There is, I believe, there's. Over a hundred food and beverage uh, facilities, wow. like full-on restaurants and things. There's one area that's got over thirty restaurants in it. Wow! The New Zealand Pavilion has got a full restaurant, cool. um, you know, doing it. And I yeah. think out of there's a lot of there's going to be a lot. So I think that people are going to be able to use it to go down and, and, and do it as a night out. Yeah, right. Well. I mean, yeah. they'll have bars and everything there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fully yeah. licensed restaurants. Yeah, and I've seen the wine selection that they're going to have for the New Zealand Pavilion. That's Brilliant. very. Cool. Oh, that's super. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, well, that's I'll, I'll be the judge of that. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, <laughs> joking. Well, yeah, I'm sure it'll be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the pavilions themselves are, you know, the, mm. you know, you're probably in a lot of them. It would take you, I would imagine, twenty visits down there to go and see the whole thing. Great, it's mm. huge. And it, it, uh, I was, I was pleasantly surprised when I saw the. Um, I can't remember, but it is works out pretty, tr pretty cheap if it's just a season ticket. Yeah. For, uh, the the for other thing that because they were doing the trial. The car parking, everything is absolutely superb. Yeah. So you drive in, you park, you you don't you're not walking more than maybe 150 meters Great. to yeah. the different sections and everything. Um, it's very very widely open spaced. So yeah. even under these uh, restricted times, you won't feel even if it's packed, you won't feel yeah. that it's packed. Um, and they're also um, I, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I believe they're probably going to do uh, permanent testing stations there, so they'll have rapid testing oh, right. on entry. Okay. Um, so to give people all the confidence to, to go. Um, it's a lot to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's actually exciting. It's going to be a shame that, that the rest of the world is not going to be as easy to get here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, Matt, what we always end with is a little bit about why you love Dubai and what are the reasons are that you're here. Tell us a little bit what, what you like about this place. You and I uh, have a similar environment where we both have wives from Canada. We do, right? We do. So we live yeah. halfway between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halfway between the in-laws. That's right. That's, a, that's, that's a true. Good. That's true. <laughs> or in some ways, you could say it's as far away from the in-laws as you could possibly get. <laughs> pretty, pretty much true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Um, oh, is that your final answer? Oh, fair enough. We haven't <laughs> had one of those before. That's yeah, fine. It's, uh, That's it's, fine. It's, 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 it's situated well geographically. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's super. No, that's great. Um, I like. I think that I, every person that I've talked to when they've come to Dubai, I think that you get the first six months when you arrive in Dubai, you don't know if you're gonna what's going to happen. I think that you hit a point that you either love it or you hate Dubai. Um. The reason I love Dubai is it's a village. Yeah. Mm. Right? Um, you know, I actually loved it when we couldn't get everything. I loved that sort of, that really sort of uh, edgy yeah. part of du- that was Dubai. Um, you know, we all assume that travel is up until 18 months ago, we assumed that, you know, getting on an airplane and just flying for six hours, well, that's like I was driving from Auckland to Hamilton. Correct. You know, that, there was just nothing to us. I mean, the amount of countries that I've visited, you know, my my boys, your kids, mm. you know, they they experienced a, a lifestyle which was completely different. Oh, where are we mm. going? Oh, well, I don't want to go to India again. Can we go somewhere else? Yeah, mm. okay. Do you want to go to Jordan? Oh, well, you know, it, yeah, you know exactly. that, was, that was just how we lived. Um, the more that, you know, I, I find that Dubai – is actually more genuine in a lot of places, in a lot of ways. So, you know, if you don't do a good job, everybody's going to know about it. Yeah, that's true. Because it is a village. Mm. But if you do do a good job, people are going to pat you on the back. Yeah. Um, you know, the tall poppy syndrome that we unfortunately face back in New Zealand mm. is just non-existent here, mm. you know. Mm. Um, but there's a there's the other side of things that people don't understand that, you know, I was lucky when I... Um, when I was born, you know, my parents took me home to a nice house and they put me into a room and they fed me whenever I wanted to be fed and they read me stories and they, you know, had a mobile hanging over my bed that, that you know, it stimulated my brain and I got mm. to go to school and I got to do things. You get here and you realise you meet people that they were lucky enough that they actually got food once a day. Yeah, that's You know, food. that when they could walk, mm. they were given a bottle and told to walk, you know, mm, five kilometres to get water and that yeah. was part of it. If you were lucky, your your sibling was there to look after mm. you while your parents are out in the fields getting mm. enough uh, something that the family kept alive. Mm. So when you get exposed to that side yeah, of things, yeah, true. it yeah. changes the way that you think. Mm. You no longer care about whether or not you know you're gonna you know the. Yeah. It just changes the way you think about yeah, life no, no, being here, right. yeah. Yeah. but equally giving you a huge amount of opportunity. Mm. So it's exactly. kind of a no. That's, that's, a, a, that's a great yeah. answer. Yeah. A very good way, I think, to uh, yeah. No, that's a great way to end to, off. To end off. But um, thanks for coming down. Hey, yeah. my thanks, pleasure. Thanks, and, man. Uh, was, was great. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how we can drive this captain's coffee. No, I'm looking forward and, to that too. And uh, let's take it from there. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed that uh, podcast with Matt. I certainly did. Learned a lot about coffee. Rex. Yeah, no, it was brilliant. I loved it. It was better than the last time I went here. It's all right. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm very excited about learning and getting the coffee for the uh, Captain's Table coffee. So if you like what we're doing here, please like it and see us on, on, our, on our channel. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Bye.